Welcome to Finish It February. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here today. Today's video is in a slightly different setup than usual. As you may be able to tell, I have just filmed TBR Mash and I thought I would film this video to give you a little bit more insight onto what it is that I'm planning on reading this month. So I've just done my TBR mash picks and if you've watched that video, if you haven't watched it, I will link it down below. Feel free to go and watch that one first. But you may have noticed there was a little bit of a trend in the books that I was picking. That being that they were all final books in a series. So I have started way too many series. I think everyone on booktube can say that pretty much but particularly over the last like couple of months I feel like I've got towards the end of a lot of series and not quite finished them or there's been sort of backlist ones that have just been sat there for too long staring at me and I keep going to clear my shelves out and I keep thinking should I just get rid of these but I have like one book left in a duology or one book left in a series and I just I just need to finish them. That is pretty much it. So I decided I liked the alliteration so we're going with finish it February and yes this is the shortest month of the year but I have decided to put a lot of books on my TBR and I mean the thing is is that I don't usually DNF but there are a couple in here that I think if I really don't like them I will just give up and I will just DNF them call it a day. So what we're gonna do is talk you through the books that I need to finish the series. Now some of these are on my TBR, Mash TBR, so I will go through those ones first because I will definitely be reading those or at least attempting to read them. To be honest, two of those are the ones I might DNF, but those are the ones that I will definitely get to. We have then got more that I'm planning on getting to. We also have got a readathon happening in February. So we have Royal Readathon hosted by the lovely Becca and Liv. And it is all based around Disney. And this month is all particularly based around animals from Disney. So all of these books I will be trying to fit in to the Royal Readathon prompts as well and I will also tell you about those at the end of the video. Basically I'm going to go through all the series that I need to finish that I plan on trying to finish this month and then I will match them up to some Royal Readathon prompts. I will say I've done a video before of all the series that I need to finish in general. This is not all of them because there are some that well there's some that actually have started since that video and there are some that I actually have more than one book to read. There is one exception in this video where I'll be reading more than one book from a series to finish it off but I will explain that when I get to it. Everything else I only have the last book left to read this month so that is why it is on this TBR. Right let me grab the TBR mash books first. So I'm not going to give you too much of a synopsis of any of these because there is a few and to be honest some of them I don't even remember the synopsis which is just an issue but we have got Evermore by Sarah Holland. This is the concluding part of the Everless Evermore duology. I don't know what the bigger title of this series is. It was one of the first books I got from a subscription box. Everless was anyway and I bought the sequel and just never read it. This one I will be reading or at least attempting. This is one of the ones I may end up DNFing because it's been so long since I read the first one. If I'm not liking this I'm just gonna put it down and get rid of it to be honest. I will try and give it like at least 100 pages but we will see how it goes. We then have got Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. This is the concluding part of a duology. I only read the first one last year. This one only came out last year. I'm definitely planning on finishing this one. I don't have any qualms with finishing this one. I This is one of the ones I really wanted to get on this TBR to be honest. But then I've got the exception to the rule of only one book to finish the series because this one I actually have two and I also kind of need to reread the first one and that is Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. So this is the third part in the Illuminae files. I read Illuminae many years ago, never finished the series, actually ended up on haul in Illuminae and then my love of Jay Kristoff got involved and I decided I wanted to read them again. So I ended up putting Illuminae on my wish list. I was gifted Illuminae and Gemini and this one came up on TBR Match for most recent purchase because I purchased it with the intent of finishing it this month because basically I do have a weekend where I have the house for myself so I'm just going to binge read the entire series. To be honest I might even be able to do them all in a day although these are chunky they are such quick reads because the writing in here is not sort of your typical writing as you can probably see. So this one will all will be read alongside these two 
we're going to be reading the entire series. I have two more on TBR and TBR. They are Empire of Gold by S.A. Shacklebortis. I have really enjoyed the first two in this series and I'm just waiting for one of them to be a five star because it just feels like it's building to that and I've heard such good things about this series in general. One of them has got to be a five star. To be honest I do listen to the audiobook of this one so I think I'm going to be able to get through it fairly quickly or at least I can listen to it whilst also reading other things. This will be my sort of travelling to work book. But yes, I will be finishing this series. I'm not going to try and give you a synopsis for this one because it's complicated by this point in the story. So yeah, third book in the Day of the Bad trilogy. And then we also have Five Dark Fates by Kendara Blake. This is another one that I may end up DNFing because I did actually try and read it before and I could not get into it. And I am 35 pages in. I've been 35 pages in for a while. So this is about a world where there are triplets born in every generation. They each have different powers. In this book, we have got a elemental, a naturalist and a poisoner. And basically, they have to compete to figure out which one of them is actually going to get to live and be queen. The other two will get killed off, apparently. So this is the fourth book, very confusingly named in the series. I really enjoyed this series when it first started, but I feel like it probably should have been a duology and it's a four book series. And I don't really care about it by this point. But you know it's just there and I feel like I should at least try and read it. Okay so for the other ones on my finish it TBR we have got four that are fairly new releases and one that is backlist. I'll talk you for the backlist first. It is a fairly random one. It is The Everlasting Rose by Danielle Clayton. This is a sequel to The Bells which I did really enjoy at the time. It's basically about these girls who are called bells who are basically their job is to make people beautiful and you have to kind of train to be a bell and the main character is training to be one of them there are only so many that are chosen each year and the main character is training to be one of them and then there are things that happen from there i again do not have the best not i'm not giving the best synopsis of this because it's been a while since i read the first one i will need to find some sort of recap but I do remember enjoying the first one and I bought this one literally as soon as it came out and just did not pick it up. So I'm hoping this will kind of inspire me to read this. Again, it may be one that I may start reading and I may DNF, but I do know I do like Danielle Clayton's writing because I read a short story from her recently and still enjoyed that. So I'm hoping that I will like this one and we'll see. Hopefully I will get to this one. Now for the new releases, we have one that came out a few months ago and I've been dying to read it, but I wanted to read it along with the audiobook because the audiobooks for this series are great and that's how I read, well, reread the first one actually, but then read the second one and I really enjoyed that reading experience. So... I'm planning to do that with this one. I'm also planning to do it the same weekend that I read Illuminae, Gemini and Obsidia and you will see why when I hold up the book because it is Aurora's End by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. It is in the same sort of vein but this one is an actual sort of prose novel and I really really love this series and I'm really excited to see how it ends but the audiobook like I said has not been available in the UK for some reason. The authors themselves didn't even know why. I watched like a virtual book event with them and it was a UK based one and everyone was like excuse me where is the audiobook and they had no clue but finally it has a release date. It's due out I think tomorrow actually as a film in this. I get an audible credit next week so I will be spending that on Aurora's End and I will be listening to this one and to be honest when I listened to Aurora Burning and Aurora Rising actually I listened to them both in one day so I have no problems with fitting this one into my schedule. I'm going in order of release now for these ones. Next one was A Psalm of Storms and Silence by Roseanne A. Brown. So this one is the concluding part to A Song of Briefs and Ruin which I really enjoyed. I have heard very mixed things about this one as a finale. I've heard that people who really like the first one are just like confused by this one as to like it feels very different apparently like in tone and things like that. I don't know. We will see. I'm still excited to read it. Again, it's one that I did listen to the audiobook. I'm going to do a lot of audiobook listening. To be honest, that's kind of where I'm at for my reading at the minute because concentration-wise, audiobooks are really helping. So I probably will do the audiobook and also read along route for this one. But I am excited to see where it goes. Hopefully it won't disappoint because this was one of my most anticipated reads of last year. I just didn't get around to reading it because it only came out in November. But hopefully I will actually enjoy it. Fingers crossed because look how beautiful these covers are. I, I loved the first book in this series so much. Then we've got one more. I, to be honest, I don't want to talk about it too much because I contemplated not buying this one because I wasn't sure if I necessarily wanted to buy anything more from this author because she did some weird things to do with signing books that weren't hers. You can look it up online if you want to. But I did end up getting 
minute because I do just want to see where this finish where the series goes. I do believe this is the last one because there are only three siblings and each one is about a different sibling. It is The Nobleman's Guide to Scandal and Drip Prank by Mackenzie Lee. It is a series that follows three siblings, the Montague siblings, and it's just each one is a different one. So you've got Monty in the first one, you've got Felicity in the second one, and then this one it follows is it Adrian. Adrian the little brother who you've not really seen much of from the other two because he is a lot younger and he kind of stayed with the family while the other two went off and did their thing. One of the reasons I am reading this one is that it very much fits for a prompt for Royal Lead Upon that I will get to in a minute so I will be trying to read this one. This one is pretty chunky but from what I remember of these the text is pretty big and they are actually really quick read so hopefully I will be able to fit this one in. There's a lot of books to read this month. Now I do have one more but I don't know if this actually fits into Finish It February so this is probably going to be the last on my list and to be honest if I don't read it I don't feel too bad because this only came out this month so I haven't had a chance to read it. I literally received it like a week ago. It is The Monarchs by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. This is a sequel to The Ravens. It is a sorority house witch story and I believe it's going to be a duology. I tried to look it up online and everything I found seemed to say a duology but to be honest you never know you think something's finished and then they release another one so it may be a duology it may be the rest of a series but this one will get me to date for now at least so this one I will read if I have a chance but this is probably the lowest priority just because at least it's not sitting on my shelves shaming me at the minute it's still new enough that I don't feel the shame it's fine. So those are all the books that I plan on trying to read this month. It's it's a few. There are none of them are particularly small. I do also have one more book that is continuing a series, but is technically starting a new series. But I'm trying to read one of them every month. So I will just show you that now as well, just so you know, because that one's gonna come up in my read upon prompts in a second. It is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy, which is the third trilogy in the Realm of the Elderlings. It is the seventh book in total. I just finished Ship of Destiny like two days ago and I just really really want to carry on with the series. I'm trying to like I said read one a month. I'm going to hopefully get to the point of reading two a month when we get to the Rainwild Chronicles because I'm trying to catch up with the Catch Up Book Club by the time they get to the end like the very last book. I would like to be able to participate in that live show and I was working it out the other day and I'm pretty sure what I would need to do is read one every month and then for the Rain Marl Chronicles read to a month and then I think I'll be able to catch up with them. So this needs to be read this month basically and to be honest it's quite short for Robin Hobb. It's only about 500 pages long. It's apparently going to break me inside. This book does work perfectly for one of the prompts so I'm gonna put it on here. Speaking of prompts let me grab my Royal Reader Fun prompt list. So we have some lovely graphics created by Liv and for the prompts we have got con which is to read a book with a battle or war now there are plenty of these books that feature battles but for this one i think i'm probably going to go with empire of gold because it's the final book in a series there is and it literally says stabilize their warring people in the synopsis war there we go for thomas o'malley we have got read a book where two people fall in love it's a romeo and juliet retelling again i think that counts for lucifer we have got read a book with a big bad so for that I'm going to say the Aurora Cycle, there is definitely something that they are fighting against in this, so I'm going to count this one for that. For Pluto, we've got a reader book with a pet or animal, that's where Fool's Errand comes in, um, the main character in this fits has got a magical ability which is called the Wit, which is basically meaning he can commune with animals, and he has an animal called Night Eyes, which is his sort of companion, so night eyes definitely fits for this prompt falls errand then for raja we have read a book set in a country that is not your own now there are many in this and they did say their fantasy worlds count i'm just gonna grab one and say that will do to be honest i don't think any of these are set in my country so a psalm of storms and silence this is inspired by west african folklore i do not live in any of the countries in west africa there we go. Then for Max, we have got read a book that is set at or beside the sea. The word shipwrecks is in the title, hence why I said this one works perfect for a prompt. For Nana, we have got read a book with familial relationships. We have got five dark fates. They are all sisters in this. I also, if I'm doubling, if I end up DNF in this, I will probably double up on prompts and put Aurora's end in that one again because 
there is a found family vibe to that one but also two of the characters are brother and sister so there we go and then for simba we have read a book with royalty so again we have got plenty of those i can double up if need be because empire of gold psalm of storms and silence five dark fates and possibly everlasting rose i can't actually remember but i'm pretty sure all those have royalty but Evermore also has royalty. The main character had a link to the royal family as a child and that's kind of how she's brought back into the storyline. So this one will fit for royalty as well. So there you have it. That is my rather ambitious finish it February and royal read on TBR. I invite any of you that want some inspiration to finish series to join along with me. I mean, you may have already planned your TBRs, but who knows? Maybe this can become a regular thing. Maybe every year I will use February just to sort of finish off those series that I never quite got around to finishing the year before. So that is everything. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. Let me know if you have any series that you are planning on finishing this month. And I will see you guys next time with a new video. Bye. <laughs>